Week four of college football was absolutely insane. And week five presents some incredible matchups that could replicate what was week four. Week four produced a number of exciting games and Alabama and Georgia is the headline of week five. It's a game that everyone's had circled for quite some time heading into the 2024 season. And today we take a look at which one of these teams is going to come out unscathed. When you look at these two teams, both of them are in a little bit different places than maybe you expected. Everyone kind of anticipated that Georgia would just run through almost everybody up until this point. But the Kentucky game obviously showed us that there are some things they need to work on. Alabama is under a new leadership in, in Kalen DeBoer, and we expected this team to still be good. But obviously there was going to be a transition to this new coaching staff. It seems to be going pretty well as the Crimson Tide are averaging nearly 50 points a game. Now, granted, you could question the quality of competition so far. But at this point, I think that you feel pretty good about what Alabama brings to the table. Now, Georgia, obviously, like I said, took a little bit of uh, you know, it was a little bit of a road bump against Kentucky. Obviously, that's still uh, something that's going to be concerning for Georgia fans. But. Georgia is still a a two-and-a-half-point favorite, which is kind of surprising. I honestly did not expect this to be in Georgia's favor, but also I think you can't overreact to just one game. So overall, it's okay. I think that it's still – there are a number of lines this week that I thought were pretty surprising, but it's going to be fun to see which one of these teams can actually win this game. Now, this is a matchup that normally we're talking about this in the SEC championship game. However, this is going to be a really exciting – weekly matters a regular season matchup one in which is going to have major implications for which team is ahead in the race to the sec championship that being said the loser of this game doesn't feel too bad about it they just go back to the drawing board obviously they, they're they not okay with losing but they're going to figure out what they need to do better in the next time that maybe these two teams meet now the questions for both teams there are plenty of questions for both sides the offense for Alabama has to find some balance. How do they do that? Jalen Milrow has been really fun to watch, but you're going to have to throw the football against Georgia. It's plain and simple. Georgia's defense is too good to be one dimensional and finding ways to find that balance is going to be a big key for the Crimson Tide. Jalen Milrow is going to be someone that is the X factor of this team. He is going to dictate how exciting or disappointing, I guess, this team will be in this game. For Georgia, it's going to be how do you contain Jalen Milrow? They are going to scheme up some things. I know Kirby Smart has some plans. Glenn Schumann has some plans about how do they slow down Jalen Milrow. He's an electric player that can hit some deep balls, but at the same time, you maybe have some questions about his intermediate passing. Can he put touch on passes? Those are going to be things that they are going to test, as well as how well can he handle pressure? Is he going to be able to throw the ball with a big pass rush. Are they going to be able to move the ball down the field through the air as consistently as they have on the ground? George is going to try to take away that ground game as much as possible. And they're going to try to get the ball out of Milrow's hands and pretty much try to let everyone else beat them, which is going to be an interesting task for those role players. But we'll see what Jalen Milrow has in store as well as what Alabama can do as well. Now, this is not just the, the fact that Kirby Smart and Glenn Juman are great defensive minds. Kalen DeBoer is a genius in his own mind. So this is a, if you're looking for a matchup to watch that isn't a player, it's going to be Kalen DeBoer against Schumann and Smart. Finding ways to get a little bit of an advantage or find a weakness in one side or the other is going to be such a fun outside of the game. Maybe not a direct impact uh, when it comes to the players doing certain things, but their play calling is going to be really exciting. I think that's something that's going to fly under the radar in terms of who is going to be better, who's going to win that matchup. But the real matchup I'm excited to watch is Georgia's interior offensive line against Alabama's defensive tackles. Now, when Alabama has needed big-time plays on the defensive side of the ball, guys like Tim Keenan have stepped up in a big way. The defensive tackles have been a major force for Alabama when they need a play, and that's going to be fun to see if they can do that against Georgia's interior offensive line. Georgia came into the year with one of the best offensive lines in college football, if not the best, and they have plenty of talent to make this game very interesting in the trenches. This is a group that can dominate, but they're also facing a very talented group in Alabama, and the defensive tackle specifically 
like I said before, they made an impact when Alabama needed it. Against Wisconsin, Keenan was an absolute monster, and he is going to be a big-time player. If Georgia can handle him and can handle the, the rest of that group, then you feel pretty good. But if not, it's going to be a long day for Georgia's offense. Going to the impact players for Georgia, Carson Beck is obviously going to be the number one player. What he can do with the football says a lot about what Georgia can do in this game. And Car Carson Beck so far has looked pretty good. And there have been times, obviously, where he has struggled. But you knew there was going to be some road bumps. You knew that uh, Georgia wasn't invincible. It's not like anybody thinks they were just going to run through everybody. But Carson Beck is a very good quarterback. He is a very good football player that is ready to show what he can do against a team like Alabama. 680 yards so far this year, seven touchdowns. And I think that he's done a really good job of taking care of the football. He has done uh, get it, a good job of getting the ball to his playmakers, and he has plenty. It's just a matter of, again, yeah, finding that chemistry. I think there's still some questions about who is the elite guy at wide receiver, and uh, there are some things that need to get sorted out, like I said, finding some balance. The defense is going to have their hands full. So the, we talked about the, the interior offensive line, the, the defensive line, Plenty of matchups to watch, and obviously we're going to talk about the offensive line and what they can do. This is a group that has a ton of talent, but the defense has their hands full as well, specifically the linebackers. When you play a talented player like Jalen Milrow, obviously the defensive line is going to have to do its part to contain him, but the linebackers are going to be tested. C.J. Allen and Smell Munded have a lot on their plate this week, not only because you have to contain Jalen Milrow, but you will also have to do your normal responsibilities as well. You have to identify certain tendencies. You have to drop back in coverage. You have to make tackles on running backs. You are going to have a lot of stress on those two guys. However, these are two guys that are some of the best at their positions, and they are going to be really fun to watch against this Alabama offense. So while everyone's got their eye, I mean, you could go player by player through both teams and talk about how excited you are to see that. And honestly, we could, but I think you have to break down what is CJ Allen and, and smell Munden for that matter. What are they going to be asked to do against Jalen Milrow? Munden has that athleticism to be able to run around with Jalen Milrow. He can drop back in coverage. I'm very curious how they're going to deal with such a talented player in Jalen Milrow and obviously sending unique pressures. The defensive line is going to have to play its part, but you feel pretty good about where Georgia sits defensively. It's just a matter of what uh, the guys who are most important, the X factors are going to be Allen and Munden trying to contain what Milrow looks to do for Alabama's offense. For their own offense, Trevor Etienne has to have a big game. I think the rushing attack has to impose its will this game, and it starts with that matchup to watch the interior offensive line. Trevor Etienne is an explosive player when you get him out in space, and there are not going to be a ton of opportunities for that, but this is where Georgia can make a difference. They can differentiate themselves in this game by – dominating the offensive line and getting Trevor Etienne involved in big plays. And if you can find some of those plays, that's where you're going to find an advantage. That's where you're going to be able to move the ball down the field, but still a very exciting offense. You also have the wide receiver group. Again, somebody needs to step up as that alpha guy. I think you have plenty of options. Dominic Lovett has been solid for them. Arian Smith, even if Colby Young to be one of those guys, you're looking had plenty of options you just need someone to step up and especially in a big game you need someone to play big you need someone to be that guy be that alpha because this is going to be a tight game and if you let Alabama hang around they are going to hurt you probably more than you anticipated now the impact players for the Alabama Crimson Tide everything starts with Jalen Milrow Jalen Milrow is so fun to watch just I mean from a talent perspective Jalen Milrow is fun in almost any offense that you could put him in. The fact that you get to compare or pair him with Kalen DeBoer says a lot about what the potential of this offense can be. Now, Jalen Milrow obviously has his limitations as a passer. However, I think he's done a pretty good job so far of developing his game. He has been someone who has stepped up in a big way for this team, and he has been a really good pairing. Like I said, he's been a good quarterback in Kalen DeBoer's system. And not what we saw from Michael Penix, at Washington last year, but you see a player 
who has that dual threat ability. You have the 590 yards passing to eight touchdowns. You also have 156 yards and six rushing touchdowns. So you know that he's capable of making big plays with his arm and with his legs. And one of the biggest, I think, emergence, I guess, has been Ryan Williams. Ryan Williams is a freshman who came to Alabama with high expectations. And so far he has exceeded those expectations by being the number one guy for this team. He has been the go-to player for Jalen Monroe. And I think that this is going to be a really big test for him. And he's going to be able to showcase, is he ready for the, a new level of competition? You can say, you know, Wisconsin had a pretty good secondary. I don't know if they had anybody on the level, maybe Ricardo Hallman on the level of Georgia, but you have to prove your worth here. And granted, he is a freshman. So even if he doesn't play well, there's still plenty of time for him to showcase what he's going to do as a college football player. It's just right now you feel really good about what he can do. And so far he's been really exciting, very explosive for Alabama. And I think that only continues. It's just going to be a lot harder to find open space. So you really have to be aware of your, the technicality of your, of your routes, the, the, nuances of getting open it's not just going to be a, i'm more talented than this player because georgia has so many four and five star guys there's a reason why these are two of the best teams in the sec so it's going to come down to the details of it can you run this route at 12 yards instead of 11 can you get this one yard of separation can you do these different things that are required to win football games of this magnitude the defense is also going to have their hands full now, this is a, an offensive line in Georgia that is very physical. So guys like Tim Keenan are going to have to play their roles. And so far, they've done a really good job of that. Guys like Keenan, he Otis, there have been plenty of players that have stepped up. And you have to do that again. Because, again, this is going to be uh, the minor things, the little things are going to be the difference in this game. It's going to be a back-and-forth battle. It's going to be physical. The linebackers are going to have to do their part as well. Jihad Campbell, not having a good year so far. Deontay Lawson, those are guys that are going to have to be physical, that are going to have to make plays and do it on a play-by-play -play basis. The secondary, even though we talked about Georgia's concerns maybe at the wide receiver position, there's still plenty to worry about. It doesn't mean that they're bad. It just means that we haven't found that true alpha right now that can be the go-to guy for Carson Beck. That being said, this secondary for Alabama, which is very young and very inexperienced, they're going to have their hands full. So a guy like Keon Saab has to step up and get his players, his teammates, to step up in a big way because Georgia can move the ball through the air. They can move the ball on the ground. And if you are not careful, this is going to get out of hand. And this is what makes this so impactful is you have, I don't want to say momentum on the line, but when you have – some guys that need to step up or maybe are, aren't necessarily the most talented you have it's Alabama, I guess, but you have opportunities to build that confidence. And this secondary has some players that need a big game against a big time opponent. And if they can do that, you feel really good about where Alabama is headed in 2024. It's just going to be a very difficult test. And it's going to be difficult for both sides. This game, again, Georgia is a two and a half point favorite as I'm recording this. It says a lot about the talent on both sides. It also says that they, Vegas thinks that Georgia is still the better team despite its struggle against Kentucky. It's going to be a fun game. If you had to pick this game, honestly, it just comes down to how well Georgia contains Jalen Milrow because if Milrow has confidence, he's throwing the ball to Ryan Williams and this offense is moving the ball with some efficiency. I feel like Alabama has the advantage there. If they contain him, Georgia's going to, I won't say run away with this, but feel they're going to feel pretty good about their chances to win. Either way, this is an epic matchup to have in week five. It's going to set the tone for the rest of the college football playoff race. And it's going to be a really fun game to watch to see two of the best teams in college football go at it in week five.